to be honest, the British parliamentary sovereignty that was supposed to be regained by leaving the EU is more folklore than reality. Because British governments have a level of power that is hardly imaginable in my home country, Germany. When Chancellor Bismarck explained how he conducted politics, he spoke of the art of the possible. And the same applies then as now. How much and what is possible in political business has as much to do with the actors as it does with the rules of the game. If there is a lack of majorities, political opponents are forced into coalitions here in which each protagonist pulls in a different direction, which reduces the radius of what is possible. And this cannot be compensated for by the government coalition made up of the Social Democrats, the Liberals and the Greens, offering the opposition parties a pact for cooperation. And this scenario reflects the dilemma of fragmented party systems. And that's the situation here in Germany. The government's power has clear limits. The situation is different in Great Britain. The British Parliament de facto consists of only one chamber, the House of Commons. This means that the government does not have to legislate with the approval of a second chamber. The House of Lords today can delay things but cannot stop them. In Germany, the Bundestag consists of two chambers, the Bundestag and the Bundesrat. And the Bundestag is the representative body of the people. The Bundesrat is elected by the federal states. And laws can often only be passed if they are approved by both chambers with the required majority. And this gives Parliament greater power than in a de facto unicameral system. And majority voting applies in Great Britain. And this means that the party with the most vote in a constituency receives all of that constituency's representation in Parliament. And this means that the government usually has an absolute majority in Parliament. An absolute majority means that the government has more than 50% of the seats in Parliament. And this makes it very likely for the government to pass laws that the opposition cannot block. Proportional representation applies in Germany. And this means that the parties are represented in Parliament in proportion to their share of the vote. And this means that the government usually does not have an absolute majority in Parliament. A minority government can only pass laws with the support of other parties. And the executive branch in Great Britain consists of the prime minister, the cabinet and the ministries. The executive has a very strong position compared to parliament and the judiciary. The prime minister is elected uh, kind of by the parliament, but he has also the power to dissolve parliament and called new elections. The cabinet is appointed by the prime minister and is responsible to him. And the ministries report to the cabinet and carry out the cabinet's policies. The power of the UK executive is based on a number of factors. The prime minister is the head of government and has a very strong position vis-a-vis -vis parliament and the judiciary. And uh, this power to call new elections that was eased again is a very important one. And the cabinet is the highest body of the executive branch and consists of ministers appointed by the government. The cabinet is answering to the prime minister and carries out the government's policies. And ministries are the administrative units of the executive branch and are responsible for implementing the government's policies. And uh, these powers these wide-ranging powers of the prime minister with appointing and dismissing the ministers who are members of the cabinet, uh, that's an important one as well. And the prime minister heads the government and is responsible for formulating and implementing government policies. And um, the prime minister recommends judges to the monarch for appointment. And the prime minister is commander-in-chief of the British forces. And uh, as I said, the cabinet is responsible to the prime minister and carries out the government's policies. And the cabinet is also responsible for formulating and implementing government policies. And ministers are responsible for implementing government policy in their respective departments. And 
in these what are called administrative units, then all this implementing happens of these policies. And ministries are responsible for managing public resources and providing public services. Parliament has the ability to control the executive through a few measures, which are not very strong. Members of Parliament can ask ministers questions about their work during question time or the Prime Minister and PMQs. And Parliament can set up committees of inquiry to investigate the work of the government. And Parliament can initiate a vote of no confidence against the Prime Minister and his government, but with the first past the post system. But if the no confidence vote is passed, the Prime Minister will have to resign. In Germany, the executive has a lower position than the parliament and the judiciary. The chancellor is elected by the Bundestag and is responsible to parliament. Ministers are appointed by the chancellor and are responsible to him or her. The ministries report to the federal chancellor and carry out the federal chancellor's policies. But the judiciary in Great Britain has less influence on politics than in Germany. This is because the British Constitution is not written, but consists of common law and court decisions. And this gives Parliament greater freedom to enact law that may also violate the jurisdiction of the courts. In Germany, the Constitution is written down and takes precedence over any law. And this means that laws that violate the Constitution can be declared invalid by the courts. The great power of British governments has both advantages and disadvantages. On the positive side, you could say this allows the government to make decisions quickly and effective. On the negative side, it can lead to a concentration of power in the hands of a few people and limit the rights of majorities uh, of minorities as we currently can see. And the lack of a written constitution in the United Kingdom plays a significant role in this extreme power of the executive. A written constitution is a document that sets out the fundamental principles of a country's government. It typically includes provisions on the powers of legislature, the executive and the judiciary, as well as the rights of citizens. In the absence of a written constitution, the British executive derives its power from a variety of sources. Parliament is the supreme lawmaking body in the United Kingdom, and this means that it can pass any law it wants, even if it contradicts the principles of a written constitution. And uh, the royal prerogative is a collection of powers that the monarch has by tradition rather than by law. These powers include the power to appoint ministers, dissolve parliament and declare war. And there are convention, conventions that are unwritten rules that govern the way the British government operates. These conventions are not legally binding, but they are generally observed by the government. And uh, the lack of a written constitution makes it difficult to challenge the power of the executive. There is no single document that sets out the limits of executive power and Parliament is free to pass any law it wants, even if it gives the executive even more power. And this lack of a written constitution has been criticized by some who argue that it gives the executive too much power and it makes it difficult to hold the government accountable. But there are still others that argue that the flexibility of the British Constitution allows it to adapt to changing circumstances and that it is not necessary to have a written constitution in order to have a functioning democracy. Although I personally say that the current government is the best example against this argument because they are moving the direction, uh, the, the, the country in a direction that would not have happened with a written constitution. But let me know in the comments if you think Britain should have a written constitution uh, or if you think that it's all good as it is. And if you want to see another video right now, the next one is right here in the end screen. By the way, you always see the little banner on top there for my Patreon and the PayPal. So I once again want to thank those who recently have uh, what, what is the English word again?
<laughs> suddenly I don't speak English anymore. So have uh, provided to to my work um, with with their uh, help and uh, especially on the new channel, which is doing really great at the moment. And within a very short time, um, I got more than 500 subscribers already. And uh, I'm setting the goal for reaching the thousand until the end of the year, uh, which is quite fast for a new channel, I must say. And so your help is really welcome and I'm grateful to everyone who did. And so I just want to thank those who recently um, sent some money, for example, to PayPal. Really appreciate it. And it's nice to see that you appreciate my work. And uh, the, the messages I get there is not only the money, it's also the messages I get there, um, which I'm, I'm, I really appreciate. So thank you very much again. And um, see you very soon in my next video. I'll be back.